So here's what's on my mind. Let me explain why the Commanders are an NFL best six and one since week six. Boom, that guy, quarterback Taylor Heineke. Hey, hold up, hold up, bro. What you mean? <laughs> Big fellas deserve some love too. Anybody got a problem with that? what I thought. I Absolutely. went on CBS Philly earlier today. I guarantee to win because the Washington Commanders, since they changed the name, uh -huh. they are undefeated on Monday night. 2-0. <laughs> so Strong 2-0. You're, you're guaranteeing a win, so we can play this back later. Ooh. I oh. guarantee the Commanders <laughs> will beat the Philadelphia Eagles tonight, their okay. first loss of the season. We have two of the top teams in the state of Virginia playing here right at James Madison High School, like you mentioned, Leslie. And you know what? Things are kind of calm right now before the game starts at 7 o'clock. But once the fans get here, trust me, it gets excited. And matter of fact, let's give you a preview of what that sounds like. <laughs> USA 9 is in the room where it's happening in New York City. Our sports director, Darren Haynes, joining us live tonight. And D, some incredible reporting today. A lot of big talks happening in the Big Apple. Yeah, a lot of big topics, you know, the NFL owners meetings, they spoke about different topics in regards to safety and stuff like that, but they couldn't help but answer questions about commander's owner Dan Snyder. Of course, there are multiple investigations surrounding the commander's owner. And I spoke with Jim Ursay, the Colts owner, and he is the first one to go on record to say that he wants Dan Snyder out. In your opinion, do you feel Dan Snyder is good for the league? Well, you know, it's a difficult situation. You know, I believe that there's merit to remove him as owner of the Redskins. We didn't know that when lose or draw, the song would get that much attention. Can I spit some bars on it? Oh, dude, you're talking about me. By all means. Y'all trust me? I yes. trust you. D. Hayes, bars on the track, suit and not booted, got on all black. You can find me at FedEx Field, one on one. You know the deal, keeping it real. Every interview got you wondering how we get in the crew, because I'm one of them. Tell a honey key, my man, scary Terry with the hands, yeah. Who would they say is the better actor? Me. Me. You'll see it. So, I wanted to check out Terry's acting firsthand. Mr. Haynes, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on? We were you? expecting you. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good today. Good. Well, I just want to give you your brand new keys to your brand new car. That's it? That's it. Wait a minute. Aren't you Terry McLaurin? Yeah, man. It's just my nine to five. But you make all that money. <laughs> <laughs> the Terps just pulled off the biggest upset in the last seven years. Coming up, the wild storm, the court celebration. This Super Bowl, there's one brother that plays for the Eagles and another oh, brother know, that plays for the Chiefs. Oh, if your sibling played for the other team, would you take it easy on them? No. 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 This is actually my, like, little league football trophy. Oh, no, 1990. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. At one point around here, fans wanted defensive coordinator Jack Del Rio fired. Well, you know what? When I look at my naughty but nice list, huh. since week three, nothing but nice things to say. I mean, first in the NFL in yards allowed per game, first in the NFL in tackles for loss, first in the NFL in time of possession, first in the NFC on third down, third in the NFC in points allowed. I can continue to go. I mean, the one thing I shouldn't mention is that they're the only team with 25 sacks, 80 quarterback hits, and 60 tackles for loss. Yeah, we're talking about the Washington Commanders here. Love those nuggets of domination on the defense. Excellent stuff. I've been saying it for weeks. The Washington Commanders is a new name for the Washington football team. Don't believe me? Look at this. We sent Sky 9 to fly over FedEx Field tonight, and look at what we found. Look through the window inside the team's store. The signage says, Commanders. Isn't this the most DC thing? This is a day before the Washington football team was supposed to reveal their new name. Now, this is when I called it, you guys. Almost a month ago, I told everybody the new name will be Commanders. That's why I'm confident the Washington Commanders will be the new name of the Washington football team. Don't believe me, remember? I'm the same guy who predicted the Capitals to win the Stanley Cup in 2018. And they did. Now, I believe Commanders was the new name because the three stars on the jersey, an officer of three-star rank, is a senior commander in many of the armed services. The WashingtonCommanders.com website, when you click on it, it's unavailable when other names like WashingtonAdmirals.com was. And the fact that the Washington Commanders domain name was created on July 3rd, 2020. 
just 30 minutes before the Washington football team released this statement that the team will start a search for a new name. Now, there could be a bunch of possible names on the wall, but this is all we can see. Or this could be the ultimate misdirection and the team rips off the wallpaper as a reveal, which would be Washington doing too much. We won't know for sure for sure until the official announcement tomorrow morning, but I got my LASIK vision for a reason. You're looking at the new name of your Washington football team. Excuse me, your Washington Commanders. Not being able to have my dad there to like um, celebrate this win for me was um, really emotional. We had a special guest that I wanted to bring in. <gasps> Daddy! Yeah, mommy, are you how are you? <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna be there in Beijing to cheer you on. Are you still gonna be able to kick some hiney biney? Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no one hundred percent. Nah, I'm good, man. You good? Yeah. yeah. Brother. Woo! Yeah, man. This is going crazy. You're now two wins away, Francis. From a grand slam. Yeah, man, it's emotional. I mean, I mean, being that little kid, he wanted this moment so bad, and he would be insanely happy. You guys want to know why I'm mad? In this case, you mad, the U.S. women's national soccer team is more successful than the men, has been fired after impersonating a 13-year-old in a JV basketball game. If the world is really fair, the women are more successful than the men. If the world is really fair, the women are more successful than the men. That's her right there getting the block. Women, that poor 13-year-old girl. Now listen, I have a nine-year-old daughter. She's asleep now, but I have to tell her about this example of inspiration. The story about a group of U.S. women's soccer players who were overlooked but stood taller, who were ignored but spoke louder and made to feel less than what they were worth, but didn't accept anything less than what they deserved. Hopefully, next step, equal pay for all women. Until then, I applaud the U.S. women's soccer team. After years of fighting its own federation for equal pay, the U.S. women's soccer team did what it does best win. Have you ever failed yeah, the test? Yeah, once. <laughs> but it was not my mistake. It was, it was a guy who had to push the button. So w was, was that really it? Or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was pissed. <laughs> this is a voluminous wow. report from the oversight committee. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, th listen, that's the report right there. I wow. mean, the, the, the oversight committee the, is the 79 page uh, report, mm -hmm. 298 pages of Dan Snyder's testimony and 252 pages of former Washington President Bruce Allen's testimony. Not quite yeah. light reading. We, yeah. we, we, we read it all, uh, and I will say this. When Dan Snyder was under oath, he said he could not recall or was unaware more than 100 times. Mm. This is Amari Braxton from Fairmount Heights. I'm racing him at the end of this segment. I've got a training aid. I carry this little ball. I put it between my elbows to keep myself together, um, swinging and practicing. Guys ask me if I'm ready for dodgeball or, or, or kickball in case, you know. <laughs> so. You ever play dodgeball on a, on a golf course? Try it. Oh, my God! Oh, God, that's too, me. too easy. I'm Darren Haynes live outside Capital One Arena as the Capitals take on the Florida Panthers in game four of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Let's hope the Capitals win, but you know what? We have some fans here. Oh, we got even more since I turned around. You guys ready, excited? Let's start off with Little Man. What's your name and where are you from? Sam, I'm from Maryland. Very cool. Are you excited? Who? What, which player are you excited to see? Alex Ovechkin and TJ Oshie. Oh, TJ Oshie and Alex Ovechkin. Listen, they won a Stanley Cup in 2018. They need to get it done in this Stanley Cup playoff. If a touchdown is scored, I have to watch the replay of the touchdown because I'm like, I watch him. It sounds like she's doing like the game review. Uh, she's watching tape. For she's you. the best O-line coach in the league. <laughs> I got it right in my house. Get more critiques from her. Get, what were you doing on this play, Lynn? Matter of fact, check this out. There's no yeah, way you're going to suit this. Do you see All that? Black? Wait, do you see that in the background? I'm uh, going over here. here Look what my man Cameron Crow. Listen. Cameron Crow is the NFL player. Everybody's suited and booted. And my man is wearing a Washington Commanders <laughs> polo oh. shirt he got in the new team store. <laughs> Ain't that a dang on shame? Come on, Cameron Curl. I'm boot I'm booting Curtis Samuel and Cam Curl. That's a double boot. I type oh, in Carson like wins that. and everything is 
yeah, it's him on the ground. That's every single photo of Carson Wentz when I type it in the search bar. I'm with Wizards Chris Stapps Porzingis and clearly the tallest player on the team. Chris Stapps Porzingis is seven feet, three inches tall. How often do you hit your head on things? I average about uh, three uh, head bumps somewhere a week. Ouch! Who's your lookalike? Everyone says Prince Harry. My wife tells me I'm better looking than Prince Harry. Well, she's your wife. She should so she I'm should gonna, say that. I'm going to stick with that. Um, but yeah, I hear that a lot. What was the worst haircut that you had when you were a kid? <laughs> You're looking at it right now. <laughs> I, I would kill for any haircut right now. You kidding me? I've been working my sources to get new updates on three huge stories surrounding allegations of a toxic workplace culture surrounding the Washington Commanders. First, we are just getting new reaction after a bill passed that will change work culture forever. Remember how some former Washington Commander employees couldn't speak out because they signed a non-disclosure agreement? Well, that's a thing of the past. The House just passed the Speak Out Act. It, makes it clear that survivors have a right to speak out about sexual harassment or assault regardless of any agreement they sign. If you can have everything your way right now, what would that look like? The report would be released and Dan Snyder is no longer the owner of the Washington football team or the commanders as they are now. I'd say that and I would add to it Roger Goodell. If you look at these, they're both iconic and the pink sweater wins just because the entire globe probably saw this. Championship bonus round, suited or booted? Oh, man. Why y'all doing me like this? <laughs> and I probably should have invested in iron, but we were too poor. When you look at that and knowing uh -huh. where you are now, from the, even from the fashion and the NBA, yeah. how would you describe that journey getting to this point? I wouldn't even believe it. On March 6th of 2020, during a Washington Wizards game, Riley became the first openly trans woman to perform at an NBA game. This was huge for every single little boy or little girl who is questioning who they are or that they're different and don't understand why people don't understand them. I remember being that kid. I'm just so overwhelmed. This was great for us. What does pride mean to you? Pride is very important because there are a lot of us that did live ashamed of who we were. Defensive coordinator Jack Del Rio said this about his linebacker, Jamin Davis's performance in Sunday's win. Uh, Jamin was just okay in the game. I think he, 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 he practiced better throughout the offseason. Um, uh, and it was just a so-so performance. Whoa. Just so you understand, a coach calling out one of his players to the media, that's not normal. Topper, what do you see here? Well, you know what I see, D? Yep. Developing drama. Thanks, Topper. Now, Jamin Davis was the commander's top draft pick in 2021 and has not lived up to expectations. But this, we had to ask Coach again about Davis, just in case, and he didn't scale back. Is there anything you'd like to, to see more of? No, nah, I don't. I, I, I said plenty. I gave you guys plenty there. I mean, he's got to play better. He didn't play very well last week. I, I saw a lot of good things this offseason and, and kind of surprised me that he didn't play better in the opener. Yeah, I mean, he'll be challenged to play better. Real talk, we have a situation here. Emergency phone. Doc, you played for Washington. What do you see? I'm focusing on the instructors. I think they're instructors. Wentz, quick pass, and it's intercepted! Carson Wentz intercepted as time expires! And that's how the Washington Commanders lose to the Tennessee Titans 21-17, to and it all started Right here, the two yard line, the commanders had three opportunities to get two yards for the win. That's from here to here. And unfortunately, that didn't happen and the commanders have now lost four straight games. Tough, tough, very frustrating. And then Chris Wilcox messed up my hair. That was a rule we had, nobody could mess with my hair, but Chris broke that rule. When you see all your players here and you know they're all coming back and right. here's the, the trophy, how cool you think that moment's going to be like for you? Pretty cool, uh, and it, that's good. But then to see each other, that, that'll be special. Would you let your players mess your hair up one last time? Yeah, I, I think I'd have to. They, they, they won my only national championship. Steve, see a little quieter there now from when we saw you earlier. Yeah, nobody's today, jumping behind you. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> did leave the party. Watch this video, and I want you to analyze it like an NFL coach. Okay. This is a young man that, that, that has tremendous skill set, 
as a, uh, a running back. He's got, uh, he, he's got the footwork. He's got the vision. Um, and he's got the speed. He really does to turn the corner. So, Coach, <laughs> is that guy good enough to sign a one-day contract so I can tell my family I made it to the NFL? Looking at this, I'd say you had, a, you had an opportunity to play some major college football. I did, but, I, but I'm talking about the NFL, Coach. Do you think I have what it takes to run one running play on air? How old is this video? <laughs> What, 15 years? You may have 15 years ago. Today I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I'd do it for, for your pure safety. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let you do it. This video is from 1999. Okay. Oh, geez, that's 23 years ago. But one member from that championship team is no longer with the Nationals, but thanks to updated technology, we're able to reunite him with his teammates. What's up, man? What's up, hey, man? man? How you doing? <laughs> I got one solo somewhere around here, too. I don't know. Now you're a hockey player? Where's the all this thing? Oh my god. <laughs> What's up, Chiquito? Hey Anna. How you, How you doing, 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 bro? I Let's get all go. the rules bowling. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think that moment is gonna be like for you when you finally make it back on the court? I don't know, I hope I hope I don't cry. Carrying his weight and carrying his burden. It's been tough. It's been, it's been, it's been hell. Can you hear me? You ever get used to this? I'm used to it. I heard half of what you said. That's all right. I think they should sell the team. They should sell it to me. <laughs> and what would you do if you were on the team? Don't, will we have two Eagle teams in the division? Yes, we would. We would have a Eagles East and Eagles West. There was an Eagles fan that says the Eagles should buy the Commanders and have an Eagles East and an Eagles West. What are your thoughts? That's crazy. There's only one Philadelphia team, and it's right here in Philadelphia. Yeah. Let me show you. Let's go! E-I-G-L-E-S, Eagles! There was a time in our history where black people weren't allowed to swim in public pools. The lack of access impacted our ability to learn basic water skills. Now today, Howard University is breaking that barrier. As the only black college or university with a swim program, they're on the cusp of not only making school history, but changing black history. They don't move like us. Mm. Yeah. They, don't, they don't move as one well oiled machine. They're not all here at the same time. They, they don't move like us. Mm -hmm. They don't move like us. They don't got a arm like us. Mm -hmm. They don't close like us. They don't do what we do. There's something special going on at Howard University. Help! They're the only historically black college or university with a swim program, and they're on the cusp of winning their first conference championship in 34 years. We actually rank among like number one, number two, so we could go out there and really compete, and we have a great chance to win it this year. Howard has an all black swim team in a predominantly white sport. According to USA Swimming, less than 1.5% of the country's competitive swimmers are black. There's like a stereotype that a lot of black people don't swim, but there are so many young African-American people who are swimming. We're trying to change the perception that black people don't swim. And what better opportunity can you have than to be able to have a collegiate team, a good one yeah, at yeah. that. Head coach Nick Askew is a reason for Howard's success. A former HU swimmer himself, took over the program in 2014 when the school was about to drop the sport. We were in troubled times and we weren't performing in the classroom or in the pool uh, as well as we could. And uh, that was something that was really big on our docket to make sure that we, we changed the trajectory of the program. And they changed it. The team brought a new kind of energy. Their swimming meets were sold out. They even brought DJs and dance teams to their meets. Shoot, the swimming team dances too. But most importantly, when they're in the water, they win. When the energy is so hype in the crowd that it makes our swimmers swim faster, it makes our divers dive better, and when they do swim faster, dive better, they win more, the crowd understands that. Look over your shoulder at that banner. 
What will it mean to put another one up there and, and end that drought? Uh, it would be great. It would be splendid. Um, to be able to add that banner this year will be super special because um, we've had some really trying times. Man, that is some good stuff. Now, the Northeast Swimming and Diving Championships are in Ohio, and the competition starts today, you guys. Okay, so we're sending all that good energy. Mm -hmm. The team is getting some big recognition, too. Check out this cover of Sports Illustrated featuring members of the Howard University swim team, and I all love right. the poses. Yeah, it was, it was, really a, big, it was yeah. a big deal because, obviously, they, they are the first all black swim team that ever graced that cover. Right. Um, obviously, swimming swim teams have been around for quite some time. They, mm -hmm. A lot of programs have dropped their swim team. That's why uh, Howard is the only one with a swim program in, in all the HBCUs. Right. Uh, but it, they, they plan to make some noise. They have these swimsuits, though, uh -huh. that they're going to wear today. It's like top notch. It's like the best in the world. And they cost mm -hmm. like 500 bucks per swimsuit. Wow. And each, yeah. each swimmer and diver has one. Does it say Mecca on it by any chance? No, it says like Phenom, something Phenom. On. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Mecca, I see what you did. Right. I thought you were going to take this moment to be slick and say something like the real HU on it. I, I don't listen. <laughs> I love all the HBCUs, but I guess the real HU is representing okay. in, in right. the pool. Have a, have a good one. Where, is, we love seeing you Hampton? on the show. Is, Hampton's representing. Well, yeah. You know, well, we got a lot of stuff. We're right there in the water. Just we not got in the pool. Sailing. <laughs> Y'all yeah, close to the water, but all not, of that. This not, moment is about Howard University. Yes. Okay. All right, so, yes. and Darren, we're, we're not so going to talk about that. About the real HU. The Howard University sailing program. <laughs> not exactly what we're thrilled about right it's now. It's a big thing. <laughs> all right.